know that there'll be a there might be a pop up as well and we can start today's session welcome everybody good evening we have the first session of coding week that we are running from 18 to 24th of april and uh, we we have the first session and a good session to start the coding week with that is introduction to open source that is taken by vaishnavi who is an open source expert i would say and uh, she'll be guiding you throughout the process of open source how do you start with the basics and how do you create your first repository and your first pull request live and it's all over to vaishnavi now to conduct the session i will stay on mute and you can take over from now thank you so much yash so um by the end of the session you'll understand what open source is all about and how you can you can uh, create your first project on github also as well as first commit and pull request on github before we start um uh, um uh, so who am i so i started contributing to open source through a program called google code in in 2019 and ever since then i'm contributing to various projects creating my own projects other than that i am an admin at a open source organization called anitabi.org i'm also part of various communities like first asia gdg pune meta developer circle pune currently exploring web3 these days and developer and designer so sometimes if you want to reach out later the my socials are below and you can reach out through them now uh before we start about open source we should know what is exactly version control so i assume that i assume that we are in your first year of your college and you are creating a project okay and um, you're doing it in a team uh, so you make uh, i'm in my team and i have four other members i make the first change and then i realize that the second member he or she has some more better ideas so i name the project as final project now the uh, second member has made changes so do we name it as final final project then do we have to name it as final 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 project instead of that we can easily use version control so benefits of that is backup so if i make the third change and i realize that something's broken the system is broken and i have to get back to the second change so that way using version control we can change back then easy modification so if i am doing the change and my second team member realizes that this is something wrong so i don't have to get on a video call i have to mail or meet for some days i can easily clone the project and make the changes reverting errors that's like the word says it all and collaboration as well then what is open source so open source is a decentralized and collaborative way of working together in a community or in a pro uh, in a group and you can also create like projects irrespective of location or background like i'm a first year and you are a fourth year student so that doesn't matter in open source if you are a designer or if you are a law student something like that it does not matter as all then um in open source one of the like most important use is git and github so git is the version control system that we are going to use as a base of open source and github is where we'll be deploying our projects as well as um, collaborating with each other inviting other members to work on it or we can also contribute to other members projects and uh, how can you contribute to open source so if i have a project and it has a huge code base so i can create issues for that if i find a loophole or if i find a security issue i can create a security issue i can report a bug i can propose a new feature for it then there might be some people who have found the issue but they cannot work on it so i can also claim other people's issues and i can work on that then i can make the changes locally then i can submit a pull request and then the people responsible for managing the code they'll see it and if they see that if it's the right way to solve the issue then they'll merge your code and review proposed solutions as well so if you think that you are a beginner you cannot either 
report a issue or if you cannot solve a issue then what you can do is you can review the pull request that are already made by other contributors and if you feel that this is the right way to approach the issue then you can submit and approve the issue or if you think that something better can be done then we can comment and hey be like hey i have a better solution can you do that then it will be dependent on the author of the pull request to either look after your solution or just continue the way it was before and when we are contributing so what things we should not do is all projects they have a code of conduct it's basic like normal things so we should never violate the code then if i have claimed an issue and i should keep updating my progress like if it's been 3 days then i can be like hey i have worked on this and i have been busy a couple days due to my exam so i cannot work on it further or just give me some time so you need to continuously update it otherwise what happens is that other people see that you are working on an issue but you are actually not then they are also stuck you are also stuck then um, what you should do is when you open issues you should see that if it's not a duplicate so that so that you know uh, duplicate things are not good enough in the issues so before opening an issue you should go through all the open issues sometimes what happens is the project they have thousands of issues but what you can do is simply search on github and if you see that there are specific keywords available then please don't open that issue and um also don't uh, so while working on issues they have one main branch called develop and master branch so while you are working you should always make a new branch and then you should uh, commit the changes to that branch and push it you should never contribute to the develop or the master branch because that has all final changes so far any questions what is a pull request so um, i create a project and i see that i need some change on it but i am not the owner of the project so what i do is i clone the project in my local system i make the change and i push the project to my local uh, change local fork then i have to get attention of the main contributors so i create a pull request on the main project so that they can review it and they can suggest changes as well we'll go through that when we uh, start with github now opportunities for everyone open source is inclusive of inclusive there is it's very diverse community and anyone irrespective of any background can contribute there are various programs like google summer of code google season of docs there's mlh fellowships there's 24 pull request there's girl script summer of code that uh, the tech week is going on right now then there's bitcoin summer of code then um, outreachy outreachy specifically for the women in tech then hacktober fest and there are various mentorship programs by linux cloud native foundation hackathons internships full time jobs too then um, mlh specifically they have every weekend they have 48 hour hackathons so you can participate in that as well so it's all about that we can change our source code by the name called commits yes we can propose changes to the source code and that is done through commits but um, they may be added or may not be added to the source code so uh, if we see projects like ethereum foundation their source code is all open source we can make changes to that we can propose the change we can create a commit we can create a pull request but it depends on the maintainers of the project to see and see if it's a right change for the project if they feel the same then they'll merge it sometimes it happens that your change cannot be good enough for the project so you can easily uh, close the pull request 
now uh, does everyone have git installed or github account here is there anyone who does not have the account if you don't have don't worry uh, we have a session on introduction to git and github tomorrow uh, till then you can install it by tomorrow and get it ready uh, the session will be taken by riddhi sukari and he's present right now as well and uh, he'll be conducting the session tomorrow and you can get more in tech uh, in technical uh, technicalities about git and github tomorrow but right now just listen in get to know about uh, the different commands we have the different flow of the program and then you can understand better tomorrow and you can follow along with him yeah so if you, even if you don't have don't worry just stick on or uh, listen in so that you know something about git and github and you'll be ready for tomorrow as well all right yeah fashionably you can continue yeah someone here asked about the weekend hackathon so mlh it is a similar community of uh, hackers and tech enthusiasts so every weekend they have 48 hour hackathons they have some theme for every weekend and you can join the discord they have um, a specific event page as well so you can register there you can form a team or you can contribute solo to the projects as well and um, so this is like the home page of github and those who have a account they can easily sign in from here but those who don't they can this is basic steps they can enter their mail id and sign in uh, create an account so i have a account right now so we'll be using that now uh, this is my feed so there is my profile repositories repositories are the projects that that will be there code spaces that's the separate thing then organizations that i am part of so there are like various organizations who are open source organizations so you can be part of them as a member or collaborators as well then another thing about github is projects just and sponsors so Uh, if there are people who are doing full time open source so if they need financial help or something so there are people who are willing to sponsor them other than that now let us just create a first repository now i'll create a new repository so we have to enter the repository name what do you all want to name it okay so repository varun is asking about what is a repository here also it's written a repository contains all projects file including revision history and um, if i have like a python project or if i have a spark er filter so i can create a project and i can it's like i can create a project new repository to github or if i have an already made project i can push it to github as well basically like a place where all my project details will be there i'll name the project as blue learn open source here now there are some templates as well so um, like the idea of community it is also a community open source community they have a couple templates for your first project or so but now you can use those templates as well while creating your first project but now we won't be using it then description demo now there are two options about uh, having a repository it's a public repository or a private repository sometimes what happens is that you are working on a project which you don't want it public yet 
well, it's still in progress or it has some security issues. So you can always create a private repository or you can keep it public. Now, if uh, now since like we are going to create a pull request, I'll keep it public. Then read me. So read me is like where a place uh, you can have like your entire project description, your text stack. It's just a text file, a text file time, uh, kind of thing. Then um, git ignore. So um, does anyone have, uh, is anyone worked with React before? Okay, so uh, what happens is React, there are node files which are not really necessary to be deployed. Or uh, sometimes we have some security keys while working on the backend, we have security keys for the admin entry, but we don't want the public to be uh, public to be, we don't want the public to see it. So we can always add gate ignore. So if I have a project, if I have like an environment variables, and I don't want anyone to see it. So I can add environment.env file in the git ignore. So no one will be seeing it, but in my local system on my laptop, people can see it. Yeah, not counted files other exactly. Then license, there are many open source license. So projects usually the main projects they have they un go under the general public license and branches so this will now we are creating the first project so this will be the main branch now suppose if arnav is creating some changes to my project so arnav can create a separate branch and arnav's branch will have the same changes as the brain branch now all this is done and just we have to click on the button and you your repository is created okay and um, so does anyone here want to create changes to this or should i only create the pull request or you all want to follow along Maybe you can show the first uh, one and then the others can follow from the second one onwards. Just show them how do they do it and then they can come on them. Okay. So uh, some of you all, since you don't have, yeah, since you don't have Git installed. So I'll show the first way how you can create changes through GitHub only. Now, this is the readme file and I want to edit the description. So if I just edit the description, demo for intro to open source. I just added a couple words and like this way I can commit the changes. So committing changes basically means that I will be proposing this change and I have to keep the commit title. Um, and we can also add descriptions for the commit, uh, commit changes as well. Now we can also commit directly to the main branch or we can create a new branch. Since I said that committing to the main branch is kind of harmful in a way, we'll be creating a new branch and we'll just name it as branch one. Now there's an option called propose changes. We just have to create. And now my commit is done. So people who want to see the change, so they'll be creating a pull request and I'll just write some kind of description again here and create pull request. See, this is the pull request is also done. Now, if the person who was creating the pull request, if it wasn't me and I feel that this change is good for my project, I, as a main person who is having access to this or, uh, to this project, I can easily merge this pull request. 
but now i'll show you all how you can do it on your computer as well using git this is the link to the a link to the repository i just have to copy it and those who are doing it through github what you all have to do is click on the fork button so fork that will create a same copy of this project a repository now if i click on fork okay uh, since it's my own project i cannot exactly fork it but um, fork that uh, fork means creating a copy of the own uh, repository then you can also watch changes so sometimes what happens is in big uh, big organizations there are many people tagging you or you want to view activity who's like then some changes or who is doing what in the project you can also do that then ignore that sometimes you are busy or your exams are going on so you can just change the settings to ignore and star so there are like vast number million hundreds and millions of projects here repositories here and sometimes like just like memes you see this meme and you think that it's a good meme you should remember it so what on instagram you do is you save the meme and if you want to send it to your friends you save it and you send it later so if i feel that blue learn open source this is a very nice project but i don't have time to look at it right now i can star it and i can come back to it later as well you can star road maps or good projects anything you want and what happens is after star it's kind of a validation for the contributors or the authors of the project as well now um i'll show you about cloning or shall i say the commands what we need first and now how should we go yeah you can uh, introduce the basic commands uh, if people are getting a bit overwhelmed with the information they can stay, uh, like just listen and then tomorrow they can implement as well so tomorrow we are again i'm repeating this tomorrow we are having a session on uh, git and github specifically so you just understand the basic commands right now if you, even if you're like overwhelmed right now don't worry we have a session coming up tomorrow so you can start with the basic commands first okay so um so like git in it in it the word as it says initiate so um there's two ways to create a git project there's git clone and git in it so git in it is like for mostly used if i have an already existing project but it's not on version control and i want to collaborate with others or so then i can get in it and then i can publish it on github git clone is for already existing projects like we have blue learn open source and say arna wants to contribute to that so he'll go on the terminal and he'll type git clone and the project link repository link then git pull what happens sometimes is that there are many people contributing to the repository and my local branch it's not up to date with the latest changes so what i can do is i can pull the latest changes to my project and i can merge them then um, git push i made a change i committed it and i want it to go public so i can push the change so that's when we use git pull a uh, git push then fork fork is like creating a copy of the main project clone i mentioned then origin so origin about uh, we create a branch and the master branch that is the origin of the master branch yeah that is the origin then if we create branch 2 then it comes under branch uh, it comes under the origin then uh, fetch and merge so fetch is like uh, if i use the if i uh, git pull if i use the command called git pull i can see that there are new changes then what i can do is i can fetch those changes and i can merge them to the local computer now um now we will be cloning it so this is my terminal and 
those who have git installed they can also do, follow along so i have to first wait okay now i have to clone the project so i'll type as git clone and then i'll paste the link to the repository so now what the git clone command will do it will create the exact same copy of this and uh, So, what was the project name? Blue Learn Open Source Grid. I think it's present on the first one. If you open again, yeah, the first one there. Yeah. Now. if you see that if you see that i created a pull request before but the change it's not being shown on the main branch because i haven't merged on the oh there's one pull request too it's not being shown on the main branch but now ashar has created another pull request and he's made some changes as well and i see that this is a right change and i can merge this So now, if we go to the source code, Ashar change update readme. Now you can see that the readme file has been updated here. Same way, you can add code files like uh, Python files or any files as that you want. And where was my terminal? Yeah. Sorry, not the terminal. VS Code. now we can see that ashar change is not being shown here so what i can do is i can git pull and i can merge those changes as well so this is when we can use git pull now change 2 i made the change i saved it now if we have to see that the change is done or not what we'll do is there's a command called git status now if i use the command git status i'll see that the readme file is modified now to add the change we have to use the command called git add and git add and if we say that git add specific file that will just add one file but if i use the command called git add a then all changes will be made but now since we have just one file i'll use git add all now the change is done if i use again git status we'll see that the color of the statement is changed to green so the addition whatever the change was done it was saved now we have to commit the change that's no way if we could like increase the size of the terminal that we create can you read it now yeah perfect perfect so we have to commit the change and we have to Uh, type a message, commit message. So, Ashar's message. How do we? Hmm. Ashar's message was update read me. So, if I have to, whatever message the title message will be senior. I need to enter that message. so i'll just add changed read me these messages should be short and sweet so there are people who will be looking after your change they don't need to hear the entire history that you started your computer then you opened a uh, vs code you don't want all that you just need small and sweet change and now the change is done now i have to push the change 
Okay, so now what you can read is that the updates were rejected because remote work contains remote work that you do. Remote contains work that you do not have locally. So uh, this change is not done and it's not there in my computer. So I think after. Okay, so probably. So what I did in the meantime was this change that demo high, I just made some change that was not in my computer. So I just push pull the changes and I uh, save them in my local work. So now if you see uh, now if you see VS code, so you will see that these changes has come in my computer. So, was it, is it going over it? Uh, I think we should uh, take in a few questions right now. If they have okay. any questions so far, so that uh, they can get it clarified before we proceed further. Uh, if you have any questions regarding, so we have one question from Komal. After sending the pull request, how do you do the changes? After sending the pull request? Yeah. So there's an option, there's not an exactly option, but there's a feature that we can clone pull request as well. So if I clone this pull request, so whatever changes are done in this pull request, we can change that. Otherwise, this is, uh, this is when I'm cloning, I'm doing changes to someone else's pull request. But if I have to change something to my own pull request, then what I simply do, is I go to the branch and I make the change. Then I commit the change again. Now, what happens is that if I don't enter any commit message, this is the default commit message. It's called update readme.md. So if I have some other file called run.py or any other file, the update and that file name will appear here. Now, if we see the pull request, it will be, it's, it's showing us two commits. So if you can uh, change the pull request as well, you can change others pull request. You can change your own pull request as well. You just have to go to the, main branch of the pull request and commit the changes. And uh, Divyansh is asking, can we do this in a command prompt and PowerShell? Yes, you can do it in command prompt before using Mac. I was also um, using command prompt. Or you can use the git GUI as well. Is it too much tough or easy? Do we need? good mathematics type skills. No, it's like very easy. You just need to understand the flow of how it works. You sometimes uh, in the beginning, it will be overwhelming that there are hundreds of commands, but you don't need hundreds of commands. You just need the basic 10 commands. And once you are like familiar and comfortable with those commands, it will be very easy. The first couple of days that might be tough, but if you overcome those, then it's very easy. And good mathematics, definitely not freshers anyone can do it i was doing it since i was in high school i am a fresh as well if anyone wants to know then does committing before merging cause a problem 
committing before merging. Okay, so um, if you are using, uh, if you are committing, if you are, if it's someone else's project and you are committing before and the latest change is there, then it will cause a problem. But if you're just doing it for your own project and if you're just exploring it, then it won't be. But if you are doing it for some well-known project and it has a lot of features, then I would suggest don't do that. Once I clone, where does the project go? Project got saved. Um, if you're on Windows, it will be saved in users, Windows slash user, whatever your username is, and it'll be saved in there. And if you want it to be saved in a specific path, like if I, um, I have a file called open source, like I have, so I have to go to the first file, go to the file first, like I have to do CD open source, and then I have to use a command called git clone, then it will be saved in open source. So do you all want to create your pull request here first? And uh, there's one good feature, like not exactly good, but kind of a cool thing that when you create your pull request, then, and if I merge it, then this is your GitHub graph. So right now mine is not very green, but I made some changes today. So it will be shown like, it will be shown as green here. And if I've made some 19 contributions, then it'll be darker green. If it's just one contribution, then it will be a lighter shade of green. And like, if you create a pull request and I merge it, then your graph will also have a green spot here right now. And these changes could be as small as possible, right? If if I'm just changing a readme file for some project, I feel this thing is missing in the readme file and, I, and it gets merged, I would get that contribution back, correct? Yeah. Uh, so when you fork a project, uh, then you get a contribution graph. When you commit a change, you get it. When you star, you just don't get it. But what happens is that in programs like Haptoberfest, what people were doing is that they were just changing the readme file. They were getting one pull request. And a typo that exactly like not changes the meaning of open source. So if you are doing it for Haptoberfest or something, don't just uh, edit typos and get a pull request. That's not the right way. You create some meaningful change and otherwise for any other programs or you are just learning, then it's all right. all right. So those okay. who those who want to create a pull request, what they have to do is they have to go on this fork button and you have to fork it instead of this organization, you uh, instead of this first contributions, you will see your name, uh, your account here. And uh, you can also change your, while forking, you can also change this uh, name. Like now, if I create a fork, I shouldn't, this is the organization. But if I create a fork, then what will be as first contributors that will open source. But if they have a project already by this name, then they can simply just change it. Suppose um, they can change it to anything. And so you create a fork, then wait, I have an idea. I have one more GitHub account. I'll show you all how to fork and create a change. In the meantime, when uh, while uh, Vaishnavi pulls up uh, her uh, other account, if you have any questions so far, any roadblocks that you're facing, uh, you can put them in the chat box as well and we will be able to answer them. Oh, there's one, one better idea. Um, so, AppRite, it is also a good project and uh, it is a great community for open source. So I have to fork this and I click on the button and I see the name. So if by chance I have a project called SDK for Flutter already, I can just change it and name it SDK. Otherwise it's all right to keep the original name too. 
I created a fork. So this will create an exact same copy of the main project. Now I'll create a new branch here. If I want to commit some changes, I'll create a new branch. So now this branch is created. You can do the same for the Blue Run repository. And then you can change and you can commit the changes. So I'll see a pull request right here. But I wouldn't suggest this was just for demo. I wouldn't suggest cloning and uh, forking random repositories. They are main projects, good projects. You should not do that. Is open source limited to Linux, VLC, Chrome? Can you give some easy examples of daily life of open daily life of open source? Um, in your daily life, do you use uh, open source calculators or any project? Yes, Android, uh, Kotlin and Android is a good example. Then uh, projects made in Flutter, those are good examples. Otherwise, there are complex ones like the mass rover, NASA's mass rover. It was also uh, using some, uh, some kind of code for open source. So GitHub, they also had a branch here. Uh, they also had this, uh, they have this batch kind of thing, wait, I'll show. See, there's this achievements bar, uh, achievement. So there was one ba uh, bra batch for the mass rover as well. There might be someone. Yeah, see, this is the mass helicopter contributor. This was for NASA, like using some kind of code for it, partial code. So do we update git commands? Do we update in git by commands for making that box in main? Is it? Do we update in git by command? Yeah, so to update any project, you can update by git or you can update by GitHub directly. If it's just a small change for documentation or text change, then GitHub is the right way. But if I'm adding some code files, then I wouldn't suggest using GitHub. All right, Vaishnavi, uh, do we have anything else in store uh, for today? No, it's just the AMA. All right. Uh, so I would request you to like, like tell the audience about the different opportunities of open source, right? What were the opportunities that you maybe got early uh, you mentioned that you're a fresher and uh, maybe uh, the audience that have joined us today would possibly get in the near future uh, getting into open source what are the benefits uh, how, how does open source contribute to you as well right we contribute to open source how does co open source help you out in your career perhaps that would be a good question to start off the ama with Okay, so the opportunities there are like, um, as I mentioned in the slide, there are various programs. They um, they are like paid and unpaid programs. So GSOC, it contains a good stipend. And um, other than that, organizations, they are having like volunteers. They require volunteers as well. So when I started out in my organization that I'm an admin, so they were looking out for uh, design team members or they were looking out for project managers, like who will be uh, reviewing after the code or so. So you can volunteer as well, you can get the experience. And if you feel that you have got a good experience and you're confident enough, you can also apply for paid positions. Then other um, 
other good thing about open source is the community so community they like go above and beyond now if i have to say that you name any state i know someone who's there in the community and um, like if i have to visit or there's some problem then anywhere like across the countries across the cities then uh, offline meet uh, meetups as well so offline meetups is like one good thing then um, networking like linkedin and if you see that many of the people who contribute to open source and they all started with uh, open source they help you with referrals if you are like looking for jobs no like other people making forks that forks will be effect when we do cmd and get then only it will show our main program if student can like unmute and speak i cannot understand what exactly is type can you which programming languages and tools are generally used for this open source like it has all uh, programming languages so if you go for solidity that's using crypto or cryptocurrency that is there if you go for simple languages like html css they also have projects as well if you are willing to start then i would suggest that there are road maps that uh, like web development road maps i have i have back end development road map then um, i will be in your three in like three months am i too late for open source so uh, there there is this one quote that uh, the correct uh, opportunity to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second correct time is now so it's never too late to begin in open source and uh, uh, you will like maybe you will require some extra efforts that when if you started in first year you would give one hour a day but if you are starting in third year and you want to like have a better experience then you might have to give three to four hours a day but that's up to you you can also give one hour a day but it's never too lo- uh, late to open it's never too late to start an open source how to settle on the right project and is it a good practice to apply for multiple projects at a time so how to settle on a right project is basically i would say that you start with your tech stack if you are good in python so you find the good projects in python it's don't go by the number of people contributing to it or how big the community is um other than that is it a good practice to apply for multiple projects at a time if you can if you are like confident enough that you can give equal time and equal efforts for multiple projects then apply but if you cannot and if you are a beginner then i would suggest that focus on just one good project get good at it and then move on to uh, two projects great right. if anyone wants to speak out as well uh you could raise your hand i'll ask you to unmute and then you would be able to ask the question live uh using voice uh and not just typing it out because i understand that typing it out makes it difficult to put out your question properly so if you want to like speak up as well we are open to do that as well and we're still be asking uh, answering your questions maybe raise your hand on the zoom call uh what and you can raise your hand and i'll get you on board Okay. I just want to know that it is not just a question of today topics, but how I can enter in IT with this open source? Can you give me just some basic briefing about it? Okay, are you from CS background? Yes, I am from first year, but I have uh, a little bit knowledge. I am just a beginner of programming. I have. Used around Java and Python or basics. Okay, so um, there are two ways to start with it. First way is like if you are following some roadmaps and you are creating solo projects. If you are creating a weather app in Python or a simple calculator in Python, don't just keep it on your laptop. Publish it on GitHub so that you know other people will notice it and uh, they like reach out to you. Sometimes what happens is people see my projects and they mail me that. this is a good project i'm thinking about a good idea will you uh, be willing to collaborate with us and it's like a good experience and uh, the second way is to find a community so uh, not exactly a community a community and an organization they have many projects so there are communities having like cos asia has projects in uh, react no cos asia has good front end projects then uh, 
we first initiative they have good projects so if you go to the gsoc page you'll find a lot of organizations who are having open source projects so you can visit them you can visit it through your text uh, you can like join the community you can start contributing and some uh, projects what they do they have like this label called good first issue so that is like a great way to start contributing other than that if you feel that the code is very heavy for you then you can start with documentation or sometimes projects need design so you can contribute to the design as well and as you go on learning with your uh, java and python you can then contribute to java and, uh, to the code thank you anybody else has questions for uh, vaishnavi for today's session uh, on open source on the career opportunities after on what language is the first i think uh, vaishnavi answered that already uh, if there are any such questions you are free to ask them right now can you tell us about career opportunities so um career opportunities if you want to go in fan companies then open source is a good way to get used to the environment like get used to the code or get used to the collaboration and working in teams then um, for that it, it's a good like good experience and it looks good in your resume as well but um, if you just want to go in fang then you will have to do open source then you will have to do ds as well and then you will have to apply for them but um, other than that if you want to do open source full time then you have to create your own projects you can start your own community as well i have seen like many people starting their own community and um, then they like turn it into a startup or uh, you can like then take a break and start working in it will you share the web development roadmap i'll share it on discord in the open source channel all right a good news uh, for those who are joining for the first time vaishnavi is uh, in the blue lone team and she'll be taking care of the open source uh, section on discord so if you have any questions for her you can put it in the open source channel we have on discord and we will uh, she'll be answering them uh, you can maybe mess message her directly as well or put out your question on the open source channel any roadblock uh, any roadblock you face after the session as well regarding git github uh, just you can ping her up and she'll be able to answer them answer your questions on discord uh, that is blue lone server in the open source section and uh, one more thing i would like to say about open uh, like contributing to open source in the first day till days it feels like very overwhelming there you see people who are like 10 times experts and you see people who are like doing it for 4 5 years and you feel that you are a newbie or noob and you feel like you have to stop but don't do that be consistent like even if it's as low as 10 minutes a day be consistent and eventually like you will get a hold of it but don't feel that open source is just for experts nothing like that you are rightly mentioned uh, i would request everyone to stay consistent from today onwards uh, and possibly put out your updates in the open source channel so that vaishnavi can know that you are in the journey and she'll be organizing meetups and she'll be taking your feedback on how your journey is going on right uh, so in the coming weeks you can start putting out updates in the open source section and uh, you'll find yourself accountable and even if it's like less than 10 minutes as well if you're just starting out and you want you're just diving in 10 minutes is a good way to start in every day 10 10 minutes and then you can slowly increase the number of uh, minutes or hours you put in uh, we have a couple of questions regarding the recording the recording will be put up on youtube uh, on blue learns channel i'll i'll just paste the link uh, in the chat box so that you can find it it's blue learn on youtube and you'll find the recording there after the session mostly by tonight or by uh, tomorrow and uh, you'll be able to watch the entire recording there can you share some youtube channel as well as discord server apart from this blue learn platform so um, open source communities i would say that uh, uh, my organization anitavi.org it's a very good community then um, there's this student led community called hack this fall 
so they conduct like hackathons once a year and um, appright is there then there's edi hub edi uh, edi hub he's like the github star of the year he also has his own community and a youtube channel as well i'll put my github username all the resources will be shared in on discord byron so you can head on to discord maybe uh, view the channel once and uh, check out the pinned uh, messages as well so that you know all the resources are pinned so whatever resource we find useful we will pin the, uh, pin the message and you can find it any time after as well and are there any game development communities there are definitely i am not a part of that but uh... there are definitely and there's one good course called cs50 uh, cs50 is game development course it's open source and it's available on the edx website or main cs50 website yeah that is a very good course if you want to start with game development so at last one minute if you have any feedback regarding today's session and if you have any questions further you can message right now or else you will find vesnavi on the discord server on blue lens discord server in the open source channel also keep in mind we have a session tomorrow as well on git and github uh, that will be taken by riddhi sotheri and he will be guiding you in the technicalities of git and github you have got a gist of what git and github uh, feels like today but you go in detail tomorrow so make sure you have git installed prior to the session that just help us uh, go on with the session quicker and uh, you can join in understand git and github and go in and go into details as well and uh, right now we will end the session for today thank you so much uh, for coming in and that we i would like to thank vaishnavi for coming in and taking the session uh, we will put up the recording on youtube and you will be able to find the recording there all right uh, thank you so much vesnavi again for coming in and i would like all of you who have come in uh, come in for today's session be there tomorrow for tomorrow session as well you get a good insight on get and get up and i'll end today's session uh, with this all right see you have a nice day good night bye bye thank you